Good day, folks. It is Andrew here from IDB. We're going to take a look at some of the top Mac apps that are currently available to support the touch bar on the brand new MacBook Pro. First up is Apple's Final Cut Pro. I was really excited to see not only did all of Apple's stock apps come with support for the touch bar, but so did their pro apps, including Final Cut Pro. We are still waiting for Logic to be updated, but Final Cut, Motion, and Compressor all got touch bar support right out of the box. There are a lot of cool ones you can do here, including switching different tools, though a lot of those are going to be redundant for people who have been using this application for a long time. I do find it easier sometimes to just use the keystrokes, you know, A, V, whatever I need to do to jump between my different controls instead of having to go up and use a touch bar. There are some things that have been useful and I have like some of the trim options that would normally take a couple keystrokes to do. This is probably just one of my favorites because it's one of the apps that I've spent the most time in and trying to adjust to using the touch bar for. Next up on the list would be Drop. This is a great color picker that is brand new and it came with touch bar support. A few things that you can do in here that are really neat are this color palette. I really like just being able to use a keystroke to open the application and then just tap on one of these and it's immediately copied to my clipboard. So when I'm working in web design, video, or graphic, I can just kind of tap, choose one from my color scheme that I use quite often, or you can actually use the color picker and go through and grab one from your screen or use these different color wheels to identify just the color that you want. When you find one you like, you can save it to your palette there, or you can just use that one time, it'll copy it to your clipboard, both in code like Swift or in hex for HTML. Next up is Affinity Designer. Designer is of the same ilk as Adobe Illustrator or Sketch if you're familiar with those apps as well. What I really like, one of the easy things right out of the box, is it immediately gives you all your recently opened or frequently opened artwork down here at the bottom so I can kind of see all my different images that I've been working in and I can tap one to open it up right away instead of having to go up to the menu and find recent, all of that. It's much easier to just grab it right from this picker down here on the touch bar. Then there's just tons of different tools. You can't really customize what's in the touch bar in this application, but as you change tools, it'll show you different things. So just as you go through the tool list there on the left, you can see it updating as I'm going through the list. For example, different joining tools when I'm actually using the pen and drawing, I can use different gradients when I'm on the gradient selector. I can see the different points on my triangle when I'm using like the polygon tool, even the hand tool, there are still different controls that you can use quickly. So if you don't know all the shortcuts by hand, this is really handy. And even if you do know the shortcuts, if you just kind of keep your hand up there by the touch bar. You can easily use them instead of having to jump around your keyboard to shortcuts that are all over the place. Airmail 3. This is one of the first mail clients to support the touch bar and it's really, really useful. This is an app that I can definitely see working with the toolbar or the touch bar. First off, there's archive. I can quickly archive projects or an email that I no longer need or delete it if I'm going to be deleting those emails. I can quickly search. I can change different vaults or different accounts. So if I have multiple email accounts all tied here to airmail, I can jump between them. I can refresh. I can create new emails, all things that are capable through keystrokes, but it's kind of nice that all these frequent functions are right here. I particularly like filters, being able to tap on filters, apply one or multiple filters that I need. So I want to see all my new ones with attachments and it can pull those up really nice and quick. I would be remiss if I did not mention another great graphics application, Pixelmator. Pixelmator has a ton of customizations that you can do. So you just go to view and then customize touch bar and there's just a ton of different controls that you can bring down there. Now this is another one that works really well. It doesn't as much change per application. It still does, but there is more customization up front. I really like being able to switch tools here. It is pretty quick instead of having to dig through that toolbar or if you even have that hidden. So I like being able to do this and you can also use things at the same time. So as I'm drawing, I can change the sharpness, I can change the opacity, I can change the size of my brush as I'm moving it around on the artboard. This is definitely one of those applications that I feel does work well with the touch bar and I would prefer to be using this touch bar to switch different tools than the actual tool selector on screen especially if I'm using some sort of stylus like one from Intuos or Wacom. Kind of jumping around the different spectrum of apps that you can use, next up is PCalc, which is a great computer calculator, way better than the ones actually built in and has a ton of scientific functions. They've been around for a while and their application has always been great, but now you can do even more utilizing that touch bar. It's really nice because obviously you can do things like clearing it, but you can also add and remove things from memory. Not only can you use these kind of default functions they've set up that are very common, but again, going to view, customize touch bar, you can add a whole ton of options. 
There are literally just a massive amount of options here. And a calculator is a great thing for this because people all use calculators differently. They're all going to need different things. Like maybe you need to use functions or you need to use rounding. You can drag those features that you use the most down to the touch bar. And if you ever need to, you can simply reset it back to default. And lastly, one of the most popular apps and one of my favorite that really takes advantage of the touch bar is 1Password. Not only can you use it simply for other functions of the app, but it is one of the first that uses Touch ID. You can unlock your vault or a multiple vaults just simply using your fingerprint, no longer having to remember a super long annoying password. You do have to make sure you enable it inside of the settings though. You can also create new things, so I can just go ahead and tap plus, tap rewards card, and immediately add a new rewards card. I can search, so I can search for my Amex maybe, and I can quickly change vaults. All that is again done through keyboard shortcuts that you may already be familiar with, but being able to unlock it with Touch ID is fantastic. Some other honorable mentions would be Motion and Compressor, two other pro video apps from Apple that have got support as well. DJ Pro for anyone doing a lot of music stuff. Day one for those who like to journal and Mail Designer Pro 3. I was a little disappointed that their new release did require a whole new purchase, but it is a great application, especially if you're sending out a lot of customized emails. And then of course, for those finance people, there is Chronicle, a bill management app. Let us know what you think of all these down in the comments below or any new ones that you especially like. Go ahead and subscribe. It's Andrew for IDB.